Now, my friends, once again, I bring you greetings from Moesha Saddam this way. Hope you are following the presidential guidelines. Please, COVID is here and is real. We encourage you to avoid touching your teaser, your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. Mainly when your hands are dirty. Okay? I left you with an activity. Did we do it? So be honest, we have to mark our activity. Are we there? And we are going to it together. Now, I didn't put answers as I used to, because some of you could play some tricks, bad tricks, actually, to get to answers and you just photocopy. Don't do that, my friend. When you do it, you are cheating on yourself. Don't cheat yourself, OK? Now, let's read together question number one. Who were the founders of Bunyoro Chitara Empire? Yes? Oh, we have the Abatembuzi, we have the Tembuzi, or Batembuzi, with the correct spelling. Question number two, why were the Batembuzi referred to as demigods? The answer is simple. The Batembuzi were miraculous people, or the Batembuzi used to perform miracles. Question number three, name the last king of the Bachwezi. Who was the last king of the Bachwezi? Remember, we had the last king of the Batembuzi. That was King Isaza. Then we had the last king of the Bachwez. That was King Wamala. Do I have Wamala? I see someone with King Isaza. That's a wrong answer. For the last ruler of the Bachwez was King Wamala. Then how is Big of Yamgeni related to Bachwez people or Chwez? The Chwez people. This was the headquarter of the Bachwez. Obigo Mgeni is where the Bachwez had their headquarters. Obigo Mgeni uh, housed the headquarters of the Bachwez. Question number five. State any two political contributions of the Bachwez. Now this question is specific. When the question is specific, you give specific answers. If the question is open, contributions of the Bachwez, just write any Long, long horn decato, coffee growing. But this question has a limit, and the limit is political contribution. So we have the, uh, like, the answers like they introduced a centralized monarchy, they introduced royal regalia, they introduced the, uh, the building of reed palaces. Are we there? Do I have someone with everything correct? Can you pat your back? Wow. You're a great learner, and you are going to be great for, forever. Are we there? Now, again today, my friends, I seek for your attention. It's always a good thing to listen to your teachers. Now, what are we going to have today? First of all, we shall have, um, we shall have the reasons for the collapse of Munyoro Chitara. Because time came and our legendary empire collapsed. We want to see which reasons were they. Then, uh, we shall also see. We shall also see the uh, the kingdoms that rose after the collapse of Bunyoro Chitara Empire. They are kingdoms that began after the collapse of Bunyoro Chitara Empire. Then we shall also discuss the factors that led to the expansion of these kingdoms. Of course, one by one. Now, friends get prepared and we get to the first session session one reasons for the downfall for the collapse for the, of bunyo chitara empire since we learned this in p5 i have designed a question for you you have to be encouraged to think don't always wait for teachers to think on your behalf okay so which factors led to the collapse collapse means downfall disintegration what made this empire to collapse? Because it, it no longer exists. What, which factors contributed to the downfall, to the decline, to the integration of this great empire of East Africa? Is the question. One minute. Yes. Are you writing them somewhere? Now we have to compare. Are we there? Okay. Now, there are several factors that led 
to the disintegration of Bunyorochitara Empire. And among them are, one, the empire had weak leaders. Like, weak leaders like King Wamala could not command, you know, it was a very large area. So this one person could not command and control this place effectively. So one, the empire had weak leaders that could not defend the, it's, uh, that could not defend the empire. Two, this, there was constant famine that was caused by prolonged drought. They never had what to feed their population. What did it mean? It meant that people were going to starve and die, or else they were supposed to move and leave the empire. Are we there to search for places with food? Also, we had pests and diseases that attacked them. These people were attacked by various diseases. So this also contributed, it reduced the, the population because the effects of when you are suffering from a disease, you can easily die. So some of these people were dying from, uh, of, uh, they were dying because of various diseases. So it also contributed to their downfall. We had prolonged drought that I have explained already that this caused famine. Because uh, uh, when there's drought, it dries up uh, 100 crops in the gardens. So you don't get good harvests, and there will be scarcity of food. And that is what is called famine. So when there is famine, people are going to starve. Even it dries up uh, water bodies, pasture, also the animals will die. Are we there? Now we also have, uh, it was too large to be ruled by one king effectively. As I told you, the place was too large. It covered the present-day Uganda, parts of Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Burundi. So that was a very large area to be ruled by one person effectively. The word effectively is very important, okay? Because they would rule it, but not effectively. So it was too large to be ruled by one king effectively. Are we there? Even the prolonged drought, as I told you, it caused the famine that led to death of people. Lastly, uh, not lastly, emergence of independent states. E.G. Uganda, Ankole, Toro, Wanga, and so many others. Now, since the place was too large, there are these people who started saying we can also be independent. We can also live on our own, since the place was too. So the emergence of these states led to the downfall of Munyoro Chitara, the great, the legendary empire of East Africa. Also, we had misfortunes like the death of their beloved cow, Bihogo. These people believed in this cow. They loved this, it so much, but time came and this cow died. Imagine if you have something you believe in so much and it dies. Sometimes you, you take it as your God. You are believing in that thing. Then it dies. Can you really still have the, whole, uh, the courage to continue with life? If you are not very strong, that can be the end of your life. So this is what happened. The misfortunes or the death of their beloved cow, Bihogo. It left them when they were so scared and they could not hold themselves back. And eventually, the empire collapsed. Also, internal conflicts, they had internal misunderstandings among or within them. That continuously happened. And time came, they gave up. They fought one another, and finally, the empire collapsed. My friends, the last and the final blow to the collapse of this great empire of East Africa was the Luo invasion or the Luo attack. The Luo people, as you remember, they came and first settled at Pubungu. So when they were here, when they were at Pubungu, they got misunderstandings. As you remember the story of the spear and the bead. These people uh, split and they moved to various directions. Now one group went to Bunyoro. 
Chitara and attacked the people who were there. So when they were attacked, of course these people overpowered the, uh, the people who were there and that marked the end of Bonyoro Chitara Empire. So it was a big blow to these people who were still in Bunyoro Chitara as they were attacked and fought and defeated by the Luo people. Are we there? And that marked the end of the legendary empire of East Africa. I imagine if this empire never collapsed, where would we be? I also don't know. Now, friends, after that, I want you to note when the empire collapsed, it led to the formation of separate kingdoms. So when this empire collapsed, there are people who benefited, who became very happy. The likes of the Baganda became so happy. The Banyoro, the Luya people became so happy because now they also became independent. So these are some of the kingdoms that started after the collapse of the Banyoro Chitara Empire. The likes of Bunyoro Kingdom, the current Bunyoro Kingdom, which is also called the Luo Babito, Buganda Kingdom, Ankole Kingdom, Karagwe Kingdom, Uwanga Kingdom, and Rwanda Urundi, Rwanda Urundi Kingdom. So these kingdoms started. Now we are going to look at some of these kingdoms one by one. Now this is uh, simply a map of Uganda showing you the, some of these intercastrian kingdoms. When we say intercastrian kingdoms, we simply mean the kingdoms that are found between the Great Lakes of East Africa, the lakes of Uganda, um, the lakes of Toro, Ankole, and so many others. So this is just a map of Uganda showing you some of those kingdoms that are found in Uganda. Now, I have a simple question for you here. How is Bigo Biamgeni important to Uganda? The other place where the Bachos were living, how do we benefit in it today? Do we benefit from it? Yes. One, it attracts tourists who bring income. People go there and pay some money to the government and it's the income. We are talking about people go and see that place because it is a historical place. Two, it creates, it creates employment to the people. When we go there, we find the gates with the security guards and so many others. Those people are employed. That is their job. It is also used for research purposes. And lastly, it is a source of history. Do you know the source of history that uh, it gives? That is archaeology. Are we there? Where you go and get information basing, basing on fossils, the remains. Are we there? So friends, that's how, the, uh, that's how Vigo Biamgeni is economically important to Ugandanese today. Now we have session number two. Session number two, we are going to handle these kingdoms that started after the collapse of the ancient empire of East Africa. And we shall begin with uh, Bunyoro, Chita, uh, Bunyoro Kingdom. So we had Bunyoro Chitara Kingdom or Empire, it collapsed. And there is the modern, the current Bunyoro Kingdom. Bunyoro Kingdom is also known as the Luo Babito Dynasty. Okay? This is the dynasty that was formed after the collapse of the Chwezi Dynasty. So the Luo Babito dynasty replaced the Chwes dynasty. Are we together, friends? And now, when you look uh, here, you can see that this is where we find, we find Bunyoro Kingdom. It is located in the western part of Uganda, as you can see. And here is Bunyoro Kingdom. We have to know about the background of this kingdom. This kingdom is called the Bunyoro Kingdom. That is also called the Luo Babito Dynasty. Are we there, friends? Now, what do we have to know about this kingdom? One, it started after the downfall of the Chues Dynasty, which simply means that it replaced the Chues Dynasty. Are we there? Secondly, the Luo Babito Dynasty was founded by Isingoma Rukidi Mpuga. Isingoma Rukidi Mpuga was the founder. This Mpuga was the son of Chomia and a twin brother of Kato 
Chimera. Kato Chimera, the founder of Uganda Kingdom, as we shall get to know. Now, friends, the Luo Babito, or the Luo Bito, were as a result of the intermarriages between the Luo and the Bito clan. Now, when the Nilotics or the Luo people uh, attacked the Bunyoro, the people who were in Bunyochita, who had there the people known as the Bito people or Bito clan. So after defeating them, they intermarried with them and they led to what we call, or uh, what is termed as the Luo Bito dynasty or Luo Bito people. Are we there? So the kingdom. The kingdom is led by a king called Omkama. Repeat after me, Omkama. So the title is Omkama. Are we there? That is the title given to the leader of Bunyoro kingdom. The king was assisted by the chiefs who offered gifts to him, provided soldiers to, for, uh, to defend and collect taxes. So this was a very wise man. The Omkama would appoint chiefs. Why were they appointed? One, to provide him with gifts. These chiefs would go and collect gifts they bring to the king. Also, they would provide soldiers uh, for defense, and they would also collect taxes. The tax collection has not started now. It started a long time ago. Are we there? They would collect tax, taxes for the development of the kingdom. Now, these people were economically involved in activities like cattle keeping, mm, crop growing, iron smelting, salt mining, and butter trade. The Banyoro used to trade with Baganda, and many they were trading in salt. They would give them salt, they would also exchange with Matoke. Baganda were good at growing Matoke. So they used to carry out butter trade exchange. So communities since a long time ago were trading with one another. Now friends, I have some examples of the Bito kings of Bunyoro, the Luo Babito kings. In Bunyoro we have a ruling family. <coughs> Excuse me. We have a ruling family or we have a dynasty. And these are some of the kings of Bunyoro kingdom. The first one was called Isingoma Rukidi Mpuga and was the founder. There are so many. We, have, we had the Win the second, we had the Oyonyimba the first, the Win the first, the Olim and Chebambe and so many others. Now, I have singled out some few, like Kamras, one of the greatest. We had Kamras, Omkama Kamras, we also had the great Omkama Kawarega, who was known for mainly his resistance against colonial rule in Uganda. Are we there? So Omkama, Solomon, Gafabusa, Igru is the current king of Bunyoro Kingdom. You can say His Highness, Omkama, Solomon, Gafabusa, Igru is the current king of Bunyoro Kingdom. Now, if you are Mnyoro and I say, who is your king? Please don't shy away. Just say, His Highness Omkama Solomon Gafausa Igru is the current king of Bonyoro kingdom. Now, friends, we are about to come to an end and we have session number two. As you know, we do in sessions. What do we have in session number two? Reasons for the growth and the expansion of Bonyoro kingdom. This kingdom that started as a small kingdom. Now, what were the factors that led to the growth and expansion of this kingdom? Do you have any idea? Share it with me very quickly, and we after see what do I have for you. Now, one, these factors, some of them are constant to almost all kingdoms. Are we there? Now, like the first one able leaders. So Bunyoro Kingdom had strong and able leaders. These leaders would be able to defend their kingdom, the likes of Omkama Kavalega. These were strong leaders who made sure that their kingdom was protected and defended. Are we there? 
two, these people had a well-trained standing army. The Bunyoro, Banyoro had a well-trained standing army known as Avarusura. Say Avarusura, everybody. Avarusura, let's spell Avarusura. Capital A B A R U S U R A. Avarusura. This was a strong army, a well trained army that was organized by the great Omkama Kabalega of Bunyoro. So this was a well trained army of Omkama Kabalega. This army ensured that there is peace, they would collect tax, as we shall see. Also, they had fertile soil. This would support the population. They would grow crops to feed their population and favorable climate as well. This would also help in the growth of plants or crops. Also, the uh, Banyoro traded with Baganda. They traded with Baganda, which means that they were able to get goods they needed to develop their uh, area. Lastly, the acquisition of guns from the Karutumas. Remember, there are people known as the Karutumas, the slave traders, who came from Sudan and Egypt. These people came and traded with Banyoro. So to give them uh, slaves, they would also exchange and they would be given guns. So when they acquired guns, remember at first they would use spears. Now you have a modern machinery to defend your territory. So it was very easy for Bunyoro to defeat all the neighbors because they had superior, they had, they had got superior weapons. Are we there? So these are the factors that led to the growth of Bunyoro. We said able leaders, well-trained army, fertile cell, uh, acquisition of guns, and uh, what were the duties of, of Avarusura one? was to raid communities for expansion. Traditionally, to expand, you are supposed to attack your neighbor. So if you find that your neighbor is weak, you attack him and push him away. Then you say, this is my land. You declare yourself, this is my land. We don't do that today. Don't do it, you'll be arrested. Today you have to go negotiate with someone, you buy. But traditionally, you would just raid your neighbor and push him away and you become the conqueror of that place. So it, they, the Avarusura could raid the communities for expansion or attack. Are we there? Also to enforce law and order, then to promote peace and security in the kingdom. So whoever is big or big-headed, these people would deal with you, just as you can see these days. If you disturb, the police will come in. If you over-disturb, the old men will come in and they put you in line. Are we there? So that those were the duties of the Avarusura. Now, my friends, allow me end my lesson here, and I want to encourage you to keep hard working, to keep hard working, to keep that love. You must have love for what you are doing. I have organized a very, very good activity for you to test if you have been following. Please make sure you rate my work in the best handwriting. I always need, need to work. Uh, see me as I see you in the next lesson.